Hey everybody, Q Paul here, and I'm just uh, hanging out in that gap that exists between beginner Spanish and intermediate Spanish. That's the gap that we're going to help bridge. In this lesson, we're going to pick up where we left off last time. If you remember last time, we covered the regular conjugations for the present subjunctive and also showed when you can use it. We're going to continue with that by going through some of the irregular conjunctions. I know this stuff's dry, but believe me, it'll be so worth it. Once we get all of this out of the way this lesson, next lesson we're going to get down to some real nitty gritty and show you some other cool ways to use the subjunctive. So let's get started. First things first, I'm going to need a little bit more space to work with. As I mentioned, we're going to be covering conjugating irregular verbs in the present subjunctive mood. When I say irregular, I just mean that they don't conjugate following the pattern that I showed you in lesson one. That's the bad news. You're going to have to memorize these one at a time. The good news, however, is there's only six of them I want you to learn. I'll be covering all these verbs one at a time, giving you the meaning and the conjugations in the uh, present subjunctive. I encourage you to just take a screenshot of these so you can use it as a study guide later. Our first one up is dar, which means to give, and our conjugations are de, des, de, demos, den. You see there's an accent on that first and third person one. I always think that people learn better when they have examples to look at. So we're going to be throwing those in after each verb. Here's our first one. Let me know when you give Juan the key. Avísame cuando le des la llave a Juan. Now at this point, if you're not sure why I'm using the present subjunctive in this sentence, you really need to go back and watch lesson one over again. That's where I cover this particular construction in detail and show you what triggers the present subjunctive in sentences similar to this. Our next word is ser, which means to be. Now, there's two verbs for to be in Spanish. The other one's right after this, estar. And you may already know the difference. Ser is for occupation, permanent states and conditions, and origin. So our conjugations are sea, seas, sea, seamos, and sean. Here it is used in a sentence. Let me know when it is time for us to go. Avísame cuando sea hora de irnos. And we move on to the other verb for to be, estar. And we use estar for temporary states and conditions and location. Our forms are este, estés, este, estemos, and estén. Let me know when you're ready. And if we're speaking to a female, we could say, Avísame cuando estés lista. If it was a male, it would be listo. That brings us on to haber, which it means to have. And it doesn't mean to have like in tener. This is different. This is an auxiliary verb. Like I have eaten, I have gone. You would use this verb. Um, our forms will be haya, hayas, haya, hayamos, hayan. One of the first Spanish words that I teach any beginner is this word, I, and this comes from that verb, haber. I is great because it means there is, there are, you never have to conjugate it out and you can make sentences really quickly. Here are a couple of examples in the form of questions. Is there a table available? Hay una mesa disponible? Are there any strawberries? Hay fresas? See, all you do is just plug in the noun, plural, singular. You never have to conjugate that verb. It's outstanding. So, we're going to be using the same thing in the subjunctive. Let me know when there's a table available. Avísame cuando haya una mesa disponible. Avísame cuando haya una mesa disponible. Our next verb is saber, which means to know. There's another verb that means to know, conocer. They're used in different circumstances. Saber is used to know facts or to know how to do something. So our forms are sepa, sepas, sepa, sepamos, sepan. And our sample sentence, advise me when you know how much the trip will cost. Avísame cuando sepas cuánto costará el viaje. Avísame cuando sepas cuánto costará el viaje. And our last verb, and probably one of the most common ones I use in the subjunctive, ir, which means to go. We have vaya, 
vayas, vaya, vayamos, vayan. Let me know when you go to the beach. I want to accompany you. Avísame cuando vayas a la playa. Quiero acompañarte. Well, that's it for this lesson. I'm sure you're glad to hear that because, well, lessons like this one where you just do a bunch of conjugation are particularly boring. The good news is it's behind you now, and we can start to focus lessons on how to use the subjunctive in different circumstances to really boost your Spanish. I think you'll enjoy those. Well, that's it for today. Hasta luego.